I think I just made it up one day because I was it was like a piss take. It was like, you know, my mate went, you like that bloody Banksy? And I went, yeah, I'm like a shit Banksy from Burley. So, um, I was a normal primary school teacher and then I became a supply um, teacher because I wanted my life back, um, which gave me the evenings free and stuff like that. But yeah, I was, I was um, playing in a function band and stuff as well. Um, but yeah, but no art or anything. I think I'm reasonably creative. I think most teachers are reasonably creative. Um, I used, to, I used to love doing displays at school, you know, and taking a lot of time on doing my displays in my classroom, and maybe it comes from that. But, um, to be honest, I was going through quite a tough time, you know, like a lot of people do. Um, my little niece, bless her, was dying. Um, my sister's little girl. My mum had cancer. Um, broke up with my girlfriend. My mate, my mate took his own life. Graffiti taggers mugged my dad and beat him up and nearly killed him. He's 85 and they jumped him and broke his arm. And that all happened within a very short period of time and it was kind of like, so much stuff came on and I'd, I can't remember why I did the first one but I just found it quite therapeutic. And I did one for my little niece Grace and I, I, that really sort of helped I think because I couldn't do anything to help her um, survive but I think just painting the box just lifted me a bit I think. She was only 10 months old but she loved watching Peppa Pig and there's a little feather there because she was kind of paralysed at the end and the only thing she could lift was a little feather and she liked the kind of feel of it on her skin as well so I put a little feather on there for her so that was quite nice, yeah. I started doing them around here just to cover up tagging. I've seen our area degenerate a lot because of it. It's brought a lot more crime. We just do trees and general pictures and stuff. It's a bit of a cliche but do something positive makes you feel a bit better. And then I did a couple of Leeds ones and people said how much they liked them and it kind of snowballed from there, really. I thought it'd be a nice idea to create kind of pathways to the ground because as I'm walking down to a match one day and there were all these boxes and I thought, yeah, I could do one there, do one there. And I thought it'd be nice for little kids to see them, almost like a football education as you go into the match, you know. What's that badge, Dad? You know, when was that? So I started tweeting them and people started talking about them a lot more. Um, and, and asking me to do more and more kind of thing. So it became, it became quite addictive in the end as well, I think. I just started getting messages through that people had seen that they'd been blacked out and it turned out this guy was saying I was a disgrace to the city. He decided he would take it upon himself to destroy them all. He started sending me personal emails and things. It got a little bit scary, if I'm honest. I was determined to not let him win, really. The guy who destroyed them painted over the Gary Speed one on what would have been Gary Speed's 50th birthday. So that caused an enormous kind of backlash from Leeds fans. And I mean, you don't have to be a Leeds fan to think that's pretty, a pretty horrible thing to do, do you? There's a lot of stuff about men's mental health in there in the media these days, and I think he was like a sort of very symbolic case of that. You know, he was a millionaire, family, married two kids. On paper, he had everything and I don't think anybody had a clue he was going to do what he did. But Gary Speed took his own life, sadly, didn't he? He played for Leeds, Bolton, Newcastle. I think he was player manager at Sheffield United for a short time and then Wales manager. So when that box got ruined, it actually turned up, you know, in news articles in Wales, up in the North East, in Lancashire and stuff like that. And I think, you know, everyone was quite disgusted with that, really. For him, it went completely the wrong way. There was like a massive backlash against him. Um, I was on the radio, Leeds United got involved. Um, it seemed like the whole city seemed to kind of come together <laughs> behind me, really. I mean, it was, you know, it was amazing. Um, everyone was writing letters in saying they supported me and everything. They wanted me to get them back up. And Leeds United gave me some money to repaint them and take some time off school. And they also said, you and your son could come free any time. Yeah, everything came from that time where he tried to ruin him. So um, I'm glad we've got that back up there today, really. You've got to start on them all this time. Go on, Gary Speed, get one yourself, son. And what a great goal. And Gary Speed's really wrapped things up. It's given me more confidence, I think. 
I think my confidence was on the floor, to be honest, when I started painting these, and to know that like an entire sort of city is behind you, know, you know, thirty odd thousand people, it, you know, it is really nice. You know what I mean? And now I get random strangers like hugging me in the street and stuff, and wanting selfies. <laughs> And now they're wanting me to paint them, to put on the walls, so it's amazing. I've already painted lots of canvases and sold 60, I don't know. I've had people from up and down the country, really footy fans, just going, you know, I really love this kind of stuff, will you come and do one for our club? I don't know if Leeds fans will ever forgive me. Next month I'm turning it into a business, maybe one day it'll be a full-time business, but Hopefully, yeah, selling canvases and I've, I've painted kids' bedroom walls and with these kind of designs. So hopefully, painting might become might become a full-time living. Hopefully.